Welcome to an Animation Procreate Crash Course where I'm going to teach you how to create these beautiful Giphy stickers like this one here. This is what we'll learn in this session and I can't wait to get started. My name is Stefan Kunz. I'm a hand lettering artist and animator. I've learned all about animation over the course of this year. I've been teaching it to other people in my boot camps and uh, today what we're going to look at is the following. So we'll cover how to create an animation canvas, how to set it all up. Then we're going to design our first sticker. It's going to be something very simple, but you can go crazy on this one. Then we're gonna create a smooth animation out of that sticker and then adding some extra effects. Plus, I'm going to show you how to export everything onto Giphy so you'll know exactly what to create, how to create that, and of course, all the steps that go in between. Now, here's what you'll need for this session. You'll need an Apple iPad and pencil plus the latest version of Procreate. And I hope that you brought it all with you to this session here so that you can follow along all of this step by step. And I might be going fast because I'm super excited and uh, really nervous because this day is the launch of my animation bootcamp round two. This is the second time I'm running this animation bootcamp and I can't wait to tell you more about this, but that all the way until the end after we've created all this awesome stuff together. So first up, let's get creative. Let's start by getting up our iPad, getting ready and setting up our animation canvas. So to do that, it's going to be actually really simple. You are going to create a new canvas by actually opening up Procreate and then going all the way to the right at the top right corner, you'll see a plus button. So tap on this plus button. That's where you create a new canvas and you'll get a lot of new options and select the screen size. That will automatically open up a brand new canvas. Now. Here is me doing this right away live with you. So I have here the plus sign and I'll go onto screen size right here at the top. It's usually the very first option that you have. And so you can just simply click on that and that will create, boom, a brand new canvas. If you want to create any other shape or form, that's totally fine with me. The bigger you go, the less layers or frames you'll be able to make, but that's something that's more detailed, which isn't part of this session. So to get into the animation mode, what you're going to do is you're actually going to tap on the wrench tool, which is located on the left the top right side. So tap on the wrench tool. This is this one over here. And then you can then tap on the canvas setting, which is the next one. And then finally you can toggle on the animation assist. And so that will prompt you right away into the animation assist. So let me go through that with you again. So here we are, tap on the wrench tool, we're going into the canvas and then tap on animation here, right here, then you're inside. So you'll see that you're in the animation assist because the timeline down here will open up. This is where all your frames are going to be, where you can add frames, where you can tap on settings. Never be afraid of tapping anything because that's kind of like how you figure out all the stuff on your own. But right here, there's some options like speed, frame per second, onion frames, we can reduce that a tiny little bit, that's fine. Onion skins, I'm not gonna touch that, but that's kinda like the colorful things that go behind it. And here you can tap on add frame to add a frame. You can also tap on the frame here and you'll see many options come along, but we're just gonna focus on what we need right now. So if you have the animation assist turned on, don't be afraid to go back and just pause the video if you need to rewatch a step, but let's move on to the next step. So next step is designing our sticker. So we've already blown past step number one. We're going into step number two. And to do that, we're going to go into the wrench tool again, and we're going to add a text. To do that, you just tap on the wrench tool, tap add, go into the add setting, and then there you'll have the add text feature. So these three things, tap on the wrench tool, let's do it together. Here I am on the wrench tool. Instead of canvas, I'm going to the add button over here and then going down to the add text and that will prompt me right here, the text tool. I'm just gonna write cool because you know, it's cool. 
You can write anything. You could write, hey, I would suggest not doing a long word like my name, Stefan, would be six letters and that's gonna be a lot of work to do. But right now, you can also tap here on this setting where you can choose like different fonts. I have downloaded or selected here this Amzai Pro. Amzai Pro is a font that I'm choosing here. You can choose anything else you want. I want something a little bit bold and I want to change the color. Blue is not my color right now. You can change Choose any color you like. I'm going to go with black because it's simple. And at some point here, boom, that's perfect. And I'm just going to take this to the lower part. Once I'm done and happy where it is, I'm just gonna tap on the cursor to place it. So here we go again, just to check where we are. We've done all that, we've added our text, which is great. And now we can select here by tapping on the font style. You can go into the font menu. And once you have selected and gotten everything ready, you pretty much have already created the sticker that you want to design. It's not gonna be something fancy crazy. You can go as fancy as you like. You can letter your own words. You can create anything you want to. This is going to be just perfect as is, as we have right here. Now, what I want to do right now, because this is still a text layer, what I want to do is actually, I want to rasterize this text. What I mean by that is you go onto the layer and then you'll select the text layer. So tap layers, tap on the text layer, and then you'll have like the option of all the layer menu and then you'll select rasterize. How that looks is you go in here, layers, tap on the layer, and then you select rasterize. That will transform your layer into a pixel, pixelated layer, which is no longer transformable. So I cannot actually touch and transform anything about this text anymore, cannot type in anything. So that is why we rasterize that. Now, one more thing that I want to do is, it's going to be something special for the end. You'll see why, but right now it's not gonna make much sense. I'm still gonna do it and I'm teaching you what to do. So you will want to apply the alpha lock onto that layer. So how to do that? Well, you tap on the layer, again, go into the layer menu, then tap on the text layer, um, and then again, then tap on it and then select alpha lock. There's also another way to do that. That's actually just using two fingers, swipe to the right, and it will automatically transform. Or again, like I said, tap layer, tap the layer itself, and then turn on alpha lock, and you'll see a checkerboard in the back, which is going to be practical like this. So right now, we are, blowing through this first step, which was to set up your animation assist, the interface. Then step number two was to create this word. That was really simple. You can spend a lot more time in designing that. I totally would recommend it. But for here, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna stick with that. And then with that, we're going to step number three, which is going to create a looping animation. Now, before we even get started with creating a looping animation, just a quick note on animation or how this animation feature works. Well, it's kind of like an illusion trick. Everything you see is kind of just like a lot of image blowing through really fast and really quickly. That means that what you're seeing right now on the screen, that's about like 30 frames per second where you can see me and move and do all these motions. Now on Procreate, what we're doing is actually creating every single one of these frames and then moving something so that when something is here and moving around, you'll see this change in the position in the frame. It's kind of like a flip book if you ever had that. It's like blowing, going through all these pages and then seeing kind of like a little dot moving up and down. It's something really fun. You can go really into it. Um, Disney animation use these animation features. And so this is pretty much just a basic illusion thing. Now, before we get even started by moving things around, I actually want to plan my animation ahead and I'm going to show you exactly how I do this. So we're creating a smooth animation by first planning it and we're planning it by drawing a direction line of where the frame or where this letter is going to move and in what steps, all the steps in between. So I'm adding all these frame steps. Now, if you look closely at this frame line, this looks a little bit odd. You might be thinking like, why does it look like this and not like this? This kind of look, or it seems to be more intuitive, but here's the thing. The one line on the right is actually a constant speed. So everything on the right moves at the same speed. But if you look on the left, and I just realized right now that my fonts didn't turn over onto the new screen, um, we have here 
the acceleration on in the middle. So in the middle, you'll see that something accelerates because the distance between those two frames is wider. So it means that from one frame jumping to the next frame, it traveled a bigger distance. And so that's why it's moving faster. Now on the top, it decelerates because those steps in between those frames is being reduced. And that means it's going to slow down, which if we want to look or have a look at how that actually looks practically, you'll see here these two balls, one speeds up and then slows down, but the other one just moves at the same speed up and down. And so the bounce is a little bit rougher when it goes up and down. And so that's what we try to avoid. We want to create something more smooth and so on just to make that look better. This is actually one of the key principles that you'll learn in the animation bootcamp, one of seven. Um, and this is why this is so important to learn these things because intuitively it wouldn't make sense. But if you learn these things like how something moves fast, something accelerates, um, it's something very natural to see in nature, but it's not necessarily natural for us to think about that. So learning about these frames and these steps is really important. And that's one of the key things to learn whenever you create an animation. All right, now that we have learned that, let's put this into practice. So I'm going to draw in here on my canvas. I'm drawing this line, so I'm creating a new layer right here. I'm choosing the color red and I am using here a sketch brush. Now I'm drawing this here like a straight line and by holding down with a finger, I can draw a perfectly straight line and then I can create these steps in between. So I zoom in and then I create like something very quickly. Then I kind of like duplicate the size of that and then I add to that and then kind of like going further. And you know, you can create this as you want to but you can also reduce it here and then kind of like going back and then just really shorten it down and then just simply erase what you don't need. And so that will create these steps in between. Now, since I have that, that's on a separate layer. And so if I just play that back, it will create something like this. That is kind of like disco, which I don't want. So here is what we're going to do. We are going to tap on the frame with the guide and we're going to turn on foreground. So by tapping on that frame, you'll get this option and you'll see that. Now, once I'm in here, I can tap on here. Since it's the latest layer, I have this option. If I move this back around here, I have another option. Background seems so simple, but if I have one in the middle, I don't have these options because it can only use this in the front, in the back, but more on that, again, that's something extra to learn. But here, this, helps us to put this layer in the top so we don't touch it anymore and it's not gonna impact our design, which is perfect. So once we have done that, it's in a separate layer and which is great. Now, the only thing that we need to do is to prepare how many layers will we need in this design, in this thing. So here it is, we have our layers here. So we have the starting frame at the bottom. So one starting frame, one end frame, and then in between, we have seven in between frames, which is going to help us to define how many frames we'll need in this design. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and then look at my design. I'm just right now picking up the right element. Um, I just need a quick second to get everything done. And so, Counting that up, that is two frames, beginning and the end. And then of course, we also have a couple more frames in between. And so I'm just prepping everything here, ready to go. And so let's have a look at how that looks. So I have the first frame, the last frame, and all these frames in between. And now what I'm doing is I'm actually going to duplicate. So you can duplicate layers here by clicking on duplicate and repeat this. 16 times because we have 16 frames to fill or you can actually duplicate this so here four and i can select all of these and this is actually a really cool trick you can just hold these down drag them over and then you have eight and now i can select all of these again and i can just drag them in and that will duplicate all of these layers and now i have 16 layers so that's a little bit faster to do that so that's a little procreate trick that is very handy and then we can get started. So this is how you can do it in Procreate is by actually tapping on the layer and duplicating it. But I will duplicate as many layers so I'll get 16. You just saw how to do it really quickly and how to do that. Now 
we have learned on how to actually plan our animation. So we went through by looking in which direction it's moving, which step it's moving, like we're going up and then we're going down and then we're making sure that it repeats. And so everything is set up in 16 frames. We know exactly how long it's going to take. And now the only thing that is really left to do is to actually execute this plan. So now we need to transfer transform that and we're going to start slow by starting with the very first letter with the letter C. So to do that, we're going to select the letter. To do to select the letter, you're actually going to tap on selection. That's the third button on the top left. And then you're going to choose rectangle. Just it's so much easier to choose uh, your layer like that. And then you are going to select the first letter, which is the letter C. And then once you're done, we're going to make sure that magnetic is turned on. That's something really important. So to turn on magnetic, well, you're going to go on the cursor. You're going to tap the cursor. Then you're going to tap snapping. So that's one button. And then you're able to turn on magnetic. Now everything should be ready to do that. So if we go back again, select the layer, tap on select, then choose a rectangle then select the first layer and then just jump over right away to tap on the cursor, then so tap on snapping and then, then you see magnetic and you can turn that on and now you can move the letter. So I'm going to show you exactly how that works. So I'm going to tap on select right here. I'm going to select here my letter and then I'm going to go to the cursor. I'm going to turn on magnetic here. It's already turned on, which is perfect. And then I can go back by tapping. So it's back now. Now to get back the selection, this is here the handy trick. You can just actually hold down selection. It will automatically get your selection back and then you can move the C. And all I need to do is to move this a little bit higher. And now you can see the blue line on the right here. So I'm just going to move that a tiny little bit higher. And then here I can select that again. Usually actually here, I'm on the second frame or the first frame. I already moved it. I'm actually going to go back and make sure that I didn't move anything. So here, there we go. It's back. Now I'm going to select the second frame. So it's really important that when you move the letter here, you'll see that the first thing you want to do is you want to choose the next frame and then tap and hold the selection tool like I showed you just now, then tap on the cursor to be able to move it. And then finally, you can tap on um, like you can move it higher up to the next step and then finally tap on the cursor again just to have that selection ready and done. So let's do this all together. This is how it's going to look. First, right now, looking that I'm on the second frame, which is done, then holding down selection, I can now select, tap on the cursor and I can tiny move that up. I don't have to move it up too much, too much. And now I can just go to the next frame, do that again. Now I want to move it to the third position. Perfect. I'm just seeing here skin frames. I want to turn on the skin frames because that will help me see exactly how and where I moved. Now next up here, this is the third. So here again, selection, holding that down, moving that up and repeating this all over again until I have done all the steps. And don't forget, I have to go back again. So here we go. We're moving up one more time. Always making sure that it's always straight. That is really important. And finally here, one more. I'm keep saying one more, but there are a couple more steps to do here. Um, and then finally this one. Now I should be all on the top. And I can see that some here didn't really move too well. So I can either go back here, this one. Here, I'm going to move that a little bit higher up like this. And then finally, the last one, the top one all the way here. And now I have to repeat this and to move them all back. So I was on the last one. Now I'm going on the second last and going all the way down again. So just repeating all of these steps all the way till I'm down to the last one. And here we go. One after the other. I hope that you guys are following along really well and that you're not missing anything. And now as I come to the end, I see like, oh wait, I'm not at the end, but that's okay because the first frame was the lowest frame. And once you have done all of them, it should look a little bit like this. Now your first letter already should move and animate. And that's how quickly you can animate a letter and make it really 
beautiful looking. So this is the third step. So here you just repeat this all over again until you have done all of them. That's kind of in the fast paced method and then you see it works really, really well. Now, the one thing that we need to do now, after we've moved the letter up every step of the ladder and then back down again, the next thing is to repeat that for all the next letters. So we'll repeat this for all the next letters, but if we just did it like that, then you probably would think like, wait a minute, if I just repeat the same thing, why didn't I just move the entire word? Well, we don't want it to look like this. This is not our goal. We actually want to make it look a little bit like a wave, kind of like this. So that's the goal of this session is how to actually make that move up and down like a wave and not the other way around. And how do you achieve that? Well, that's a great question. You actually do that by shifting the position of one letter of one letter by itself and then shifting the position of the next letter. So in this case, we had before where you saw the entire word going up and down. We had all of the letters on the same level. Now, by shifting that, that means that our C, if it's here, our, sec our first O will be here, our second O will be one further down, and our L would be even further down. So always, always shift it by just one frame. And it would actually look a little bit like this if it's in the position that we're creating it. So right now, that's being done. We can now repeat this and repeat the same process over and over again for all the other letters so that it matches and creates that. So let's go back onto the drawing board here. So I have my first letter and on my second letter, it's on the second position. So right now, all I need to do actually is to go back to my guide here. And so I'm going to move it straight ahead and I'm going to start with the C. Now here, the C is on the second one, so I'm just gonna move one further, and then I am going to tap on the selection tool, and I'm going to repeat this. So here, I'm just moving this a tiny little bit up, then going to the next one here. Now, I actually just need to follow this principle here again, the same thing that I did on C, but I have my starting position at the right place, so you can see my C is right up here, my O is one further down, so it's perfect, and I'm just going to repeat this for one letter at a time, just so I can get it all right and make it look really good. So that's why the longer your word is, the more time it will take to do this. It's something that, of course, animation takes a lot of time and practice to do all of that, but in the end, the results are usually fascinating and there's a lot of tricks and tips that you can learn on how to speed up the whole process, make it a lot faster so you're not wasting as much time doing all of this, but you're getting faster the more you do it. As you probably can see, like I have my tips and my tricks to do this a little bit faster, um, and I'm still learning on doing it all the time, even faster with every single practice or time that I spend doing this. So right here, I'm on the second last or third last. So now just the first frame here needs to go on to the next one, just making sure that it's all straight like this. And now, we have two letters that go up and down, up and down, which is really brilliant. It's perfect just the way it is right now. And now we can go on and see, all right, we have our first letter going up, then second letter. And now we can move that to the third here. And so we're just going to repeat this. So actually I have prepared everything else, but I'm just going to do this because you guys are probably and hopefully doing it with me. I really hope that I can see the result that you're creating at the end of the class as well. And so just keep on going, keep on watching. Let's do it together and let's see how we do this. So here going to the right position here, this is the O that moves. And so I'm going here and selecting the O over here. And by doing this, I hope that you guys realize like, all right, this is possible. Now that I see this a couple of times, I am able to do this. This is always great to see practical uh, things happening. And of course, with all of the teaching material, you understand why we're doing this so we can slow things down. After some time, you don't even need this anymore. You just know exactly how to move everything um, because you just have that intuition of moving something really well through space and just seeing like how many frames you need, all of that, which is going to be something that's going to help you make things better and better and better. So here we're at the top. Now we're going down again. 
And then once we have all of that done, like here, micro adjustments, going to be perfect. And then going to move that up. There we go. And a couple more here. So this is really just the beginning here. I need to take this again, take this to the third step. And then here, this one to the last step here. Perfect. And now this is one on the last. So the L here is going to move up as well. And now let's see, I can do this also without actually having to have all these steps in between. So here, just a tiny little move movement up. Here, this one is going up a little bit more. Somehow feel that I wasn't, see, I didn't do this with the guide. Now I have to go back and still apply that. Stefan, you didn't think far ahead. So here we go. Here it goes down. It's already up one and we're already way too far up. So this time I'm going to do the selection like this because now I can actually adjust. So here it is probably on the second one. I kind of messed this up. I thought I could do it without it, but it appears that I cannot and I should not. And so right now to know exactly where I'm at with this one, I'm actually just duplicating this over and taking this over here. And so now I am just going to look. So this was the first, the second here. Here it's at the bottom. Okay, here's at the third. So sometimes when you cannot find exactly where you need to be, the easiest thing is actually to take it just to the next part and then start from there because afterwards it's so much simpler to know exactly, especially at the beginning, it's sometimes harder to really realize where you are with the letter. And so the position is easier to find out when you have a clear idea where you need to be. And because you need to just take it one further down, it's so much easier to take it from that position and so here we go. One last letter. And I hope it doesn't seem too repetitive. Uh, let's see. Ooh, this one went down faster. Oh, I see that my O shifted here. Oh. So here I made a mistake. The O shifted too far down. And so at some point, I see, this is something that you need to sometimes be aware of. It's something that you can fix, of course. So let's see here, I was on that one, but here I think I got it on the right one. So that's perfectly fine. And now here I'm at the top. Perfect. All right. So now, I am back on track. It's going great. We're just having to do a couple of adjustments, but we'll be right back on track here. So next up, perfect. There we go. See, not a problem to fix a small mistake. That happens and isn't problematic. So a big jump here. So the L here goes to the next one and then slows down right here before getting down to the last one, which is here. All right. I think there's something short. Yep. Oh, there's one missing here. Oh, this one. Okay. So here, this one goes to the second position. And now let's have a look quickly. Usually you'll track a great mistake here, but that looks perfect. That's all we need. Now I can actually just hide like the top, the foreground and look at that. That looks amazing. That's something we've quickly done in half an hour. Super simple, super easy. And your design should look a lot like this now. Now, the cool thing about this is if you want to take it further, we absolutely can because we can add also 
some color into the background, just making it pop even more. And to do that, well, this is where our alpha lock that we did at the beginning, where you turn the layer into alpha lock was going to come handy. So to do that, we're actually going to shift the position of the entire layer to the next layer and group those layers. So here it is. Let's jump in here. So we have all of these layers. Right now, every frame is one layer. As soon as I add another layer, like let me duplicate, for example, this here. I'm duplicating this. Now I have two layers. What I can do is I can actually select these two. I'm selecting the one on top and group them. And now I have two layers in here and the one at the bottom, I'm going to turn into color. So as it's coming down here, it's going to add this color. So now I'm can, I can duplicate this here. I can also hold that on to that and making sure that it's again at the bottom, fill layer, and I can repeat this process over and over again. Just hold it down until you see that blue ring around this and then you can fill this up and repeat this as often. And if you want to add a third layer, so I'm going to select, for example, a brighter color, uh, maybe just a brighter red. Let's take here the red. Let's just make it a lot brighter than the first one. So what I can do is actually duplicate here this color layer and then drag this on top. So right here, drag this on top, fill layer. And now you can see if I reduce here the onion skins, you'll see that a lot better. You see this position coming across where everything starts to drag and starts to have these colors. And so that's how you add these shifts. Now I have done this here, I think on this one. Yes, so here you can see all these layers and it looks really cool. So I'm just going to go through it step by step. So let's have a look. So in this case here, you're going to go to the layers. You are going to uh, swipe the layer to the left with one finger and then you are able to press duplicate on that layer and then you can drag it on top just to put it into the next group and then either you have to group it like here. I've already put all these layers in a group. We could have done that before as well, which is also something that we could do, but it's not always necessary. And then once you click on the layer, the one that is at the bottom, you want to put that into color and usually you should select a color beforehand, fill layer to fill it out. That's why we have everything in alpha lock. And then you just have to repeat it over and over again until all of your layers look a little bit like this, having three of the same like layers, frames into each other. So we're just grouping three frames into one, into the back, and that makes it look like there are a couple of things coming together. Now, to end it off, there's so many more things that we can do to that, um, which looks amazing. For example, here, I styled my cool a lot more added a couple of stars here. We can even change the background color, add some more to the background too. But for now, that's great. The one step that we're missing is the last step, which is exporting that one to a GIF and then adding that to Giphy to finally have that on our phone so we can add it to our Instagram stories. To do that, well, let's go and dive into first how to export it from Procreate. So to export it from Procreate, what you want to do is you want to tap on the wrench tool again and then tap on share and then finally tap on the animated GIF. So tap on the wrench tool, tap on share and then tap on animated GIF. That will, in this case here, I will tap on the wrench tool, share, here the third one and then animated GIF. You see there's like different video options. We're choosing GIF and then here you get a whole menu with different options. For the settings, well, what you're going to choose and select is first up, choosing a max resolution. We're wanting to export it in the best resolution possible. And then we want to turn on, of course, the uh, transparent mode so there's no background in our design. And then finally, you can also play a lot with the speed. So the frames per second, if you move it up, it's going to move faster. If you move it back to a lower number, it's going to be slower. And that's how you can change the speed. So in this case here, I can just increase the speed. Like here, there's 30 frames per second. You see everything moves faster. And here, it's a lot slower. We have about two frames per second. So it moves like half a second speed. And so that's a lot too slow in 12 seconds. 12 frames per second is a great speed to work with. So choose the max res, turn on transparent background, and then you can export it. And then finally you can choose whether or not you're going to airdrop it to your phone or to your computer or just save it to files on your iPad. That's up to you. 
Now, to then upload it to Giphy, you will want to do these couple of things. You will want to sign up for a Giphy account. That's the first thing you need to do to upload any GIF. And then you want to upload at least five GIFs because after fives, you can actually apply for the creator channel. You can Google that creator channel Giphy and then it will link you to something. So upload this here, create an account, upload five GIFs uh, up here and then select and apply for creator channel. And once you've applied for a creator channel, you'll get an email saying you've been approved or not approved. Usually if you don't have uploaded enough, it's not approved. So that can take a couple of hours, uh, if not a couple of minutes. But then the part that takes the longest is to wait for your gifts to actually appear on Instagram so you can find them. It took me over two, three weeks, I think, for it to get into the um, to the stickers that you can select or search for in Instagram. And the easiest way to find them, lastly, is when you have them on there, it's like always tag it with something unique. For example, for me, it's my name, first and last name all together. And then suddenly after a couple of weeks, I saw them all in there. Now. The question I often get asked is why upload something to Giphy? Like one, it's cool to have it on your phone, but yes, you can also just copy and uh, like copy the GIF, the final GIF, and then copy that from your photo account and put it into your stories. You don't even need to have a Giphy or have it up on Giphy. So that's something you can do automatically. You don't have to wait. You don't have to do the whole process. But the cool thing about Giphy is they give, give you some content uh, ideas. So they have here a content gap feature where they show you, for example, words or keywords, search words that are searched for a lot, but doesn't show enough content. Apparently people are not finding what they're looking for. And so for example, hugs is one of those and that can give you great ideas of what to upload, what to create. And so that's a really cool tool to use in that sense. Now, I have uploaded uh, approximately five Giphy's uh, or five gifts to Giphy and here are the numbers. So my very best one has already 105,000 views. I have no idea how they count that, but the second one is also start now. The first one, you don't see it, it's start now in, in the black color. And so you can already see that choosing the right color can make a huge difference on how you are perceived or how many views you get. Like the one in black got double the amount that the one in white got. So that can happen. And so that's why it's important sometimes to upload them in different colors and to change that. And to do that, well, you have to go through manually in Procreate, but that is all great. Now, I know that with what we learned just today, it seems like, well, this is really cool and exciting and I know now where to start and how to create this, but how do you create animation like the ones you create on Instagram is the question that I often get a lot. And so if you wanna create animations like this one, well, it's a lot of things combined where I teach. And here you see, this is one is for an espresso, this one is for Mercedes. And both of these got each like around 10 million views um, individually. And so this is what I teach in my six week Procreate Bootcamp. Now, this is exciting because you have six live sessions where I teach this on Zoom. But not only that, I actually also upload in every session back onto uh, YouTube itself. And so in session one, we're learning the basics of animation, like really going into depth of what the whole interface shows you, uh, how to learn these, um, these key principles of animation, like how to move things, how things should move. Like Disney has a list of 12 principles of animation. I've broken them down to seven and, and that's what I teach. So we have the basics like the interface, but also how like the key principles of designs of animations are. And then in session number two, we're learning how to make things appear and disappear. There are a couple of different methods, like for example, this one, the vanishing trick, the liquid effect. We also have some other write on effect like the start now, which is really cool. Um, there are transitions and more thing, which is really important how to actually go from one thing to the other. For example, from musing to listening is everything. That's a more technique. And so that's already in three sessions. You've learned so many things that you can then put together in your final animation. And then in session four, we're going to learn how to take all of these things and then plan and execute the animation. You'll get a ton of great templates with that which is great because you'll learn how to put that into practice and in session five we're going to deep really like how I did this car movement thing in Procreate like 
It doesn't seem intuitive that it's possible, but there are tricks and tips on how to do that. And then finally in session six, we're putting everything together and I'm telling you how to export and share your work to social media, not only to get millions of views, like some of my students have gotten 100 times more views than they had before or gotten ever before, and with this as well, I got also really acknowledged by the brands, like brands started to, to comment on the videos, like saying like Mercedes obsessed or YouTube saying, thank you for all the hours you spent on this incredible animation, uh, Magnum, Spotify on running. All these brands have actually seen these works and which is really cool. But I'm also sharing in this last session, how I film this, how I edit this, like the, the behind the scenes of all of this setting that I am in here. This is all in the Procreate course, uh, the six week bootcamp. And so I'm really excited about that. And I hope that I will see you inside of this course. And just wanted to say thank you so much for being here, for joining me live on this call. And I hope to see you inside of this summer bootcamp. And I cannot wait to welcome you all inside. Until then, thank you so much for being here and see you guys soon.